A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. And so she ran to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. And so Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. And when Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, happy Easter. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Uh, Christos vos cres, voistino vos cres. Uh, Felices Pasquas. Okay? That's about all I know for Easter greetings. So today, the church throughout the world, and if you will, even throughout time, has proclaimed this one central uh, great theme, and that is Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. So I hope that this Easter will be a, a truly a glorious Easter for you and your family. Again, I'd like to uh, say um, special hellos to all of you who uh, watch uh, these videos from time to time and even to the parishioners here at Our Divine Savior uh, Catholic Church here in Chico, all of you who, uh, if I haven't got a chance to wish you an uh, Easter greeting uh, this Sunday, uh, maybe that will, this will suffice, I hope. So I hope you and your family are enjoying all sorts of wonderful family time and uh, feasting and, and all the little, maybe some of the little things that you gave up for Lent uh, during this past, uh, this past uh, season, uh, this holy season of Lent. And now you're maybe uh, indulging, not too much I hope, <laughs> as I'm making this, uh, there's a thunderstorm going on right outside the window. So I don't know how much uh, we're going to hear of that on the, uh, on the audio, but uh, that's not uh, a canned uh, thunderstorm for emphasis. That's, that's the real deal that's happening right now. In some ways, it's kind of in keeping with uh, what happens on Easter Sunday morning. Uh, we are told that, uh, you know, this great uh, uh, phenomenon occurred, the, the resurrection of Christ. And, you know, uh, many people have, uh, many people who are artistic have maybe painted uh, resurrection pictures of Jesus on that East, first Easter morning. Uh, they're glorious. He's he's a triumphant. He's he's alive. He's 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 clothed in in this this great aura of light uh, because he's the light of the world. Um, he comes forth as this uh, the new dawn, if you will, the new dawn of uh, mankind, humankind's civilization, the world, the universe. Uh, so all these wonderful dramatic things, and yet. They're, they're kind of understated because there's this beautiful quietness uh, of, you know, the early morning. Um, there's the anticipation that, that even though there's a sense of sadness as Mary goes to the tomb uh, to anoint the body of Jesus, there's something, there's this great mystery that somehow is over all everything, it's over everything else. It's not something you can describe even with words. It's not something that you can point to here or there or over there or wherever. It's, but, but, but yet, there's a knowing, there's a sensing. We're even told in the gospel that the disciple who outran Peter and then he finally went into the tomb, it says that he saw and he believed. Well, what did he see? Maybe the, the more important question is what did he not see? You know, he did not see a, a vanquished, a broken, a dead body of Jesus. They did not see that. And there's something going on. 
there's something going on. Uh, this intentionality of the clothes are kind of folded up and the little face, the burial cloth that used to cover the face is now very meticulously rolled up and, and set aside somewhere else. Very interesting. So what is it that we, we celebrate at Easter? And I think that maybe a lot of people, you know, probably maybe ask that question. Well, what is it that the church really is is celebrating? Well, it's celebrating the victory over life over death. I guess if I was going to summarize it, that's it. That is it. Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, is victorious over sin and death. That's the Easter message. And that's the message that we have proclaimed for over 2,000 years. It is the, at the heart of the Christian faith. Uh, it's what the, it's what the, the church really uh, tries to give uh, the world is a sense that you know, through the sin and death that has come about by our, our disobedience, uh, our stubbornness to humble our sinful pride in our hearts, uh, the thing is that God uh, has been victorious over these things that bring us so much sickness and even ultimately death. You know, uh, when I had thought about the, the readings this morning and I thought about kind of the, kind of the uh, comparison, the, 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 how, how uh, opposites, you know, compare, compare and contrast when you juxtapose, you know, things that seem to be uh, uh, contrasts, you know, light and shadow, uh, you know, um, sadness and joy. Uh, those themes, those things, as they, as they compare and contrast, uh, they have that powerful, you know, it's, it's kind of like a thunderstorm <laughs> uh, in some ways. Because a thunderstorm is basically the contrasting temperatures of a low pressure and a high pressure, if I'm not mistaken. You know, cold air mixing with warm air. Uh, you know, another analogy is if, you know, if, if you eat too much pizza and your stomach has problems, it's because, you know, it's not being able to digest all of those things all at once. And uh, that's why you have a little uh, upset tummies uh, sometimes when you eat foods that are uh, competing with each other, you know. So in, in some ways, it's that, it's that comparing and contrasting of opposites. So we go to with Mary and we see her going to this, 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 this tomb. You know, well, a tomb is a place where you encounter people who have died, for the most part. Unless, you know, you're going as a funeral procession of believers and, you know, saying goodbye to a loved one. But, but essentially, you wouldn't think to really, you know, meet somebody uh, uh, alive in a cemetery. You might, you might find where they are being laid to rest, but you're not going to probably have much of an encounter with them other than just viewing their maybe their tombstone and maybe having a nice quiet thought of a, a fine uh, remembrances, uh, remembrances of them in life. But here we see Mary uh, going to the tomb uh, to find, to, to, to do something. She's, she's kind of almost like a, a moth drawn to a flame in some ways. There's this, uh, uh, almost this, uh, instinctive urge that she has to go and she goes and then she's startled to find that the tombs open and the body of Jesus is gone um, and then Peter and the disciple uh, that Jesus loved we are told ran to the tomb after Mary reported to them what she had found and I thought about that and I said well in many ways this is symbolic for us you know sometimes we think of Easter as something that happened 2,000 years ago but really, Easter morning can be our lives today because in so many ways, it's the people that are willing to, you know, uh, approach and to go into the dark places of their own lives will begin to find, if you will, you know, Christ who is enlightening their lives. Uh, they'll be finding uh, life uh, even in the in the midst of death, and so the thing is that we have to sometimes be willing 
to have courage to be able to go to those very difficult places in our lives and confront them, to, to open them up and to allow them to speak to us um, and allow us to, you know, if you, if even to investigate and to, and to, to, to look around and, and not be afraid of the shadow of death, not be afraid of the, the pain and the suffering that once was. A lot of times people carry around so many uh, wounds. Uh, they're, they've been wounded uh, tremendously so by, you know, maybe their own action at, the hand, at their own hand. Some, some of us sometimes bring about, you know, our own problems. Uh, but a lot of times we, um, we've been hurt by others, grievously so. And, and so we carry these wounds and, and sometimes they have they brought about kind of a premature death in maybe our hearts and our spirits. And so if we have the, if we have the courage uh, to say, I, don't, I shouldn't be afraid to go and, and, and address these issues, whatever they are, the things that are scary, the things that are dark, the things that seem to be death dealing in our own lives and face them for once and for all, I think the message of Easter is that we're going to find Christ walking among the brokenness there, waiting for us to come back. A lot of times we, we stifle our spiritual growth, we stifle you know, our walk with God when we've been broken and hurt, and we tend to just kind of replay that broken tape over and over and over and over and over again. It's not until we begin to really address it and that's sometimes a very powerful thing, and that's what the, the whole message of, of Lent was all about, was you know, allowing that divine voice within us to speak to our human voice, you know, that, that, to speak a word of encouragement and, 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 and draw us to be reconciled with God and to others. Um, and so, but once we have done that, then uh, we won't look at the brokenness as it once was, but we will now see it as something that, that is no longer a part of our lives. We've kind of laid that, that broken, that dead thing down. And we, may, we might mourn whatever it was, but now we are free to move on. We're free to follow Christ as He calls us now. He tells His disciples, I'm going to go before you to Galilee. You know, I'm not going to be here among the dead. I'm now going before you. I'm leading the way. And all you have to do is do what? Follow. So the, the Easter message is one that Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. And he calls us as his beloved disciples to follow after him. I hope you got something out of that this Easter Sunday. May God bless you today and every day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter.